Here is the starting point on a System 80B Spring Brake MPU, and the problem statement was that it wasn't booting. Probably the reason is all this corrosion in this reset section. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna take this diabolical battery off of here, and we'll see what's underneath there. But we've got corrosion down here, so all these parts, these 4.7K resistors here are gonna come off. Everything north of this battery all the way up to here, plus that chip, are gonna come out. And we're gonna replace all those parts with a modern reset generator. After, of course, I abate the corrosion that's on the board by sanding it and removing it completely. I don't use vinegar or mustard or toilet bowl cleaner like a lot of people will counsel. I remove all of the corrosion physically by sanding it and then scrubbing it off uh, to make sure there's no particles left with a wire brush. This also has the original daughter board on here. And the problem is, you see, nobody's worked on this one before, but that's good. There's a, this is a blind solder joint on the bottom side of this and it develops fractured solder joints on these pins. So those are all gonna come out. And then I'm probably gonna add the um, slam switch mod by connecting the bottom part of this resistor and capacitor, because I think spring brake is one that wants to have the slam switch closed. So I'll be back in just a little while. So what I do to get the corroded parts out is I use a sharp side cutters like these and just clip the components off real close to the PCB and then I flip the PCB over and use an iron to heat the remaining leg and pull it out from the back side. So I've done that for all the parts that are going to come out except for this 4528 and I'll pull that out with my Hakko soldering sucker. Um, I pulled off the crystal because it was just in the way when I get to sanding it. And it doesn't look like there's any corrosion underneath this dip switch, but I'll check that for sure. So next task is to use the Hakko to suck all the solder that I can off of or out of these holes. I have all the parts removed and you can see that I've sanded down to bare copper in most cases. And I've cleaned out some critical vias, these three plus one, two there, I should say these six, are important uh, as they carry switch matrix information. I've added some jumpers that I'm going to need to have installed when I put the Dallas Maxim reset generator on there, and I've replaced the E1 jumper. I've added the slam switch mod, I've cleanly removed the U3 socket location, and in its place will go a machine pin socket and a 2764 carrier. This one's made by um, Weebly, nvram.weebly.com. And I like this one when I've worked on the board, or at least none of these chip pads or through holes are damaged. And if they are damaged, then I'll clean the solder out of the U2 position and I'll use one of the Great Plains Electronics uh, double socket uh, piggyback boards. That one <clears throat> redundantly connects traces or solder pads from U2 to U3. So I like that one when somebody else has already worked on the board or when um, it's otherwise necessary. I'm going to leave this 5101 in here because the price of 5101 NV RAM has just gone through the roof, so I'm going to put a, a super cap on this board. The next step with it is to take it upstairs and wash it down with some uh, Castrol Super Clean. And all these holes, I can see this one here has got some of that green dust from sanding the PCB. I've got to get all that green dust out of there because uh, that dust itself can carry the alkaline that was on the board previously, and I don't want any of that back. So the next time you see this board, I will have cleaned out all those through holes, washed this down really good, and probably conformal coated it with my 3M product. 
All right, we are back with this board again, and you can see I've cleaned up the reset section by scraping all the parts, sanding down to bare copper, and now I have conformal coated that area, and I have installed or reinstalled parts necessary for this board to work. So these 4.7K resistors here, I had this switch bank off. There is no corrosion underneath it, so I reinstalled it a few caps and resistors here. Here's the DS1811 reset generator. It's actually a different part number, but we always call it the DS1811. Some jumpers up here where the 4528 used to be. I always replace this power filter input cap, and I have installed a super cap. This is a 1.5 farad, 5.5 volt cap. Reinstalled the crystal and these two 2K and a 5.6K resistor here. Down here we have the slam switch mod. This uh, defeats the slam switch at the door. There's another mod that uh, somebody else came up with. It's in the pin wiki, and it's to scratch off the, the uh, solder mask right here and put a big glob of solder right there. I just like this method better. I've uh, covered up the ROM windows with a nice label on my... Dymo label maker, and this is the nvram.weebly.com daughter card that I spoke about before. On the back of the board, to uh, replace what used to be this uh, reset card part, there's a uh, part soldered across pins 7 and 11 here, easy to remember, and it was a 3K pull-up resistor for the read-write read line, so I've just moved it to the back of the board, and this thing I'll send back to the customer, but you don't need to use these reset boards. They cause more trouble than they're worth. Uh, let's see. i got to clean up some solder flux on the back of the board. That'll be no problem at all, but this board is good to go. I have always added a tag to all my boards. It's my hang tag, and I appreciate when people leave those on there, so... If I ever see the board again for any reason, I know exactly what I've done to it, even though I can generally recognize my work. So here I have listed all the things that I've done to it. When I've finished testing a board in a game, I always write 100% Chris, and the V with the circle around it means that I've made a video of this board being tested. So I've actually already done that, but let's go to the game and test this board now. At the game now with this Spring Break MPU, and we are ready to test it. Good news is that it booted up right away after all these modifications, and it is in attract mode, driving all of the lamps on my Robo Wars. So that is excellent. So let's put it through its tests. I'm going to skip to the actual tests. It's doing its lamp mode test. I never really use this because it's just too hard to follow. It's better to see that all the lamps are working in a track mode. So you could see or hear something happening with each of those solenoids. We're in switch test now. I'm going across the diagonal of the switch matrix, which proves that all the rows and columns are working. I'll skip 77 because I know row 7 is working because that is where the advance button is. Dip switch settings are correct. And display test. Working correctly. And the spring break ROM and memory test. Working correctly. And then we go back into lamp test. So let me reboot the game. And we'll see the high scores to date flashing by. And once again, here are all the lamps on the play field. This is my homemade switch tester. So she is good to go. It was a long haul, 
but another one saved and this one's gonna last a good long time. 